Hello everyone, welcome to Sonology 2021. A decade ago, we began our annual events to announce our latest innovations and product launches. Each year, we will go on a tour around the world, meeting with thousands of users. 2020 has been a year full of challenges, and while we're no longer meeting face-to-face, we're still very excited to show you Sonology's latest accomplishments and developments. At the heart of Sonology NAS and our SAM products, fly DSM, our unified data management operating system. But there has always been more to it. The first thing that comes to our mind for NAS is data storage. And Sonology is committed to enabling users to store data securely and conveniently. At the same time, our platform can do so much more. Synology's DSM platform is extendable and is a converged platform for many IT needs, serving countless businesses around the world. As the tech industry continues to push forward with higher demands for storage, performance, and service availability, we are, of course, not standing still. In this session, I'll be going through the key changes and improvements to our DSM platform in 7.0. Additionally, we will have three additional sessions that talk about our new hybrid cloud solution, our data backup portfolio, and how our brand new Sonology photos can help organize our large media library. Be sure to check those out. Let's dive into it then. DSM 7.0 is finally here. At a high level, we focus on four key pillars, being easier to use, more reliable, higher performance, and being more scalable. Starting with the basic, we know that setting up a network storage system with this many features and options can be a daunting tax for newcomers. Even for more seasoned IT professionals, there are many proprietary features that you might not be familiar with. In this regard, we focus on two main aspects, maintaining a consistent user experience and providing clear instructions and information along the way. Starting from the all-of-box experience. In 7.0, we rebuilt the entire set of flow to be more capable, but simpler at the same time. We'll guide you through the basics, like setting up storage and things like remote connectivity. For the rest of the system, you'll notice the same design principles, clear information, and more consistency. In Storage Manager, relationships between storage pools and volumes, as well as their accompanying SSE caches, are now clearly displayed enabling a much clearer bird's eye view of your current setup. We also added a graphical layout for each device that points to where each drive or bay is at, reducing the potential for confusion when it comes to replacing or upgrading. Usability doesn't stop with new visuals, but also with new means to access your device and its services. Let's first take a quick look at what we currently use to authenticate passwords. The thing is, we tend to reuse passwords especially as the requirements for them grow more complex, requiring symbols, more characters, and the need to avoid common words. There are only so many combinations that someone might be able to memorize off the top of their heads. 51% of people surveyed reuse passwords across different web services and products. Now for the security conscious, you'll know that there is two-step authentication, and you'll be correct. DSM has already supported two-step authentication but it isn't something that is widely popular. To help increase the security on our product line, we'll be rolling out new authentication methods that make strong MFA simple to use. With DSM-7, we'll first be introducing our Secure Sign app, a more convenient way to authenticate. Approve login attempts on your phone without ever needing to memorize or typing passwords and codes. Let's see it in action. When you're logging in, as usual, type in your username. On your mobile device through the Secure Sign app, you will get a prompt to approve the sign request. Accept it, and you'll be good to go. Completely password free. Secure Sign requires internet connectivity to send those requests to your mobile device. The Secure Sign app can be backed up to your Synology accounts, meaning you don't need to worry if you replace or lose your phone. For completely offline installations, we're also introducing FIDO2 support so that you can instead use hardware security keys and even Windows Hello and macOS Touch ID. With DSM-7, you will get more options to define how authentication works. For simple, password-free access, you can choose to just use our secure sign app or one of the FIDO2 methods. 
or implement two-factor with a password, plus sign approval, FIDO2, or with the existing one-time password methods. DSM-7 is more secure thanks to our new authentication methods, but we also made performing maintenance on our devices so much easier. Going back to our most fundamental feature, the storage subsystem, we set out to make sure that our system administrators can easily upgrade, replace, and deal with drive failures. Much like any other piece of machinery or IT equipment, a large part in keeping systems running smoothly and reliably is in maintenance. Traditionally, replacing a drive in the storage pool was fairly straightforward. Pull a drive, which degrades a RAID, slot in a new drive, and repair the array. For drive failures, this made sense. But if you're upgrading storage capacity in place or rotating out old drives, this meant slowly replacing one by one, placing considerable wear and tear on the rest of the drives as you rebuild the storage pool again and again. In DSM-7, we are introducing drive replacement. If you have an extra bay available, drive replacement first clones a target drive, then seamlessly replaces the old one. All of this can be done without degrading the array or causing the whole storage pool to need to be rebuilt. Additionally, we also made hot spares have the same capability, which is called auto replacement. When a drive in the storage pool with a hot spare becomes degraded, auto replacement will kick in and begin attempting the replication process, reducing the possibility that the entire pool becomes degraded, ultimately maximizing overall system reliability. Another thing we're adding is the ability to enable auto repair for each storage pool. In the past, replacing drives require you to make the swap and then access DSM to initiate the repair process. Now, you can choose which pools to enable auto repair, which greatly simplifies offsite or the times where the person making repairs isn't authorized to log into DSM. And for the repair process itself, DSM-7 will introduce a new technique that enables a significant speed up for pools that haven't been populated as much. For example, if you filled only 50% of the pool, then the rebuild process will now take roughly half the time needed. Considering the drives are continually increasing in size and rebuild times are consequently increasing, we're minimizing the time your data stays in the potentially dangerous days. This also reduces the amount of wear and tear that your drives will be subjected to, as there should be less operations done in most cases. As said before, a large part of keeping the system up and running well comes down to proper maintenance. With DSM-7, we are making sure our system admins are getting the right features and tools to keep their systems in an optimal and healthy state. Which brings us to service availability enhancements. For mission-critical devices, Synology solutions are designed to be joined together into a Synology High Availability, or SHA, cluster. This puts the machine into an active-passive pair that provides many-level failover, should anything happen to the active server. In 7.0, we've made huge rights in minimizing service disruptions even more. SHA now performs failovers in 30% less time than before, enabling you much faster recoveries that are nearly transparent. Additionally, DSM upgrades are now less disruptive by reducing service downtime experience. This is done by improving the way the cluster behaves when an update is performed. First, the number two server, which was the passive unit, will be updated. Once that is done, data synchronization and a switchover will occur. The first unit will now undergo updating. This results in switching the active and passive server pair around, but is much faster, requiring only the time needed to do a switchover. When combined with a faster failover and switchover times, DSM updates will now take up to 85% less time than before. SHA in DSM-7 is much faster and gives you a simple and cost-effective option to maximize availability to all of the services running on your Synology solution. And for our dual controller lineup, we're introducing enhanced data reliability with BDRFS memory cache protection. When you write data to storage device, there are multiple stages that it travels through before it is actually committed to the storage medium, whether it is a hard drive or SSD. This is of course due to caching, and that happens everywhere. Through your networking equipment, the system's memory, and even cache located on storage drives. When a power loss or system issues occur, data that is stored in cache are more often than not lost for good. 
With DSM-7, we're ensuring that cache data in system memory is also replicated between the controllers. This helps maintain data integrity, even for data that hasn't been fully committed yet. As a recap, let's take a quick look at the solutions available to maximize service availability. The majority of our existing storage solutions support SHA by adding in another identical unit. The SA3200D is a special dual controller model with shared storage architecture. Both of these supports high availability in an active passive configuration for all file services and most DSM services. SHA has many level failover, and we made that 30% faster in DSM 7. For iSCSI only deployments, our dual active UC3200 features completely non disruptive failover. This is a more purpose built model designed to maximize service availability. With DSM 7, we focus on overhauling multiple subsystems. We made the user interface framework much faster and more responsive. We shortened the time needed for failovers, and we also made sure to optimize how we handle storage arrays. Performance is up 80% for RASICs, a stunning improvement based on optimizations to our underlying subsystems. Additionally, performance is also improved when a storage pool is degraded, helping reduce service disruptions. And in addition to rate optimizations, we also focus a great deal on making SSE caching more reliable and more effective at improving performance. First off, SSE caching can now be enabled or disabled without affecting system services. This greatly helps system administrators in many ways. One, being able to first start from just a hard drive based array and then adding in additional performance when requirements grow. And two, when SSE cache drives need to be replaced, all of these can be done without affecting services provided. DSM-7 introduces metadata pinning, which drastically boosts the performance of the entire system when doing certain workloads, such as when older snapshots get replaced by newer ones, and also when backups are rotated out in active backup, resulting in massive improvement to the time needed to complete the tasks. Metadata pinning makes SSE caching beneficial to more types of workloads but we didn't stop at just that. We also re-architected the writebacks of systems that get triggered automatically when the rewrite SSH cache is removed or becomes degraded. The writeback ensures that data gets synchronized with the base volume. Here, we see our nearly three times speed compared to before. Fast flow for SSH caching makes sure that synchronization is faster and that the source system spends less time in the degraded state if it SSH fails or is approaching its rate lifespan. These are just some of the larger changes we've done to the storage system. Put together, we are making DSM and our devices one of the most easily serviceable and manageable. As part of that goal, we're also expanding what types of usage scenarios that our solutions can service. Fiber channel support will be introduced with DSM-7, enabling our customers to deploy in high performance and low latency networking environments. Fiber Channel will be one of the most efficient protocols on our solutions, having much less overhead than iSCSI. Setup for block storage will be consolidated in SAM Manager, which contains the original functionality from iSCSI Manager. SAM Manager will enable simplified management of LAN permissions by allowing you to assign an alias for a WWPN or IQN. This makes it much clearer and easier to understand, especially for servers with multiple initiators. And we're also introducing a new feature that tackles an increasingly common problem, archival storage. Today's data projects are getting larger and larger, and oftentimes, there are requirements for large and cost-effective pod storage. DSM-7 introduces pad-out volumes, where we engineer file system-related components to support volumes up to one petabyte. This is great for bulk storage and consolidated backup storage, Pedal volume opens up many possibilities where capacity matters. Much work in creating DSM-7 went to making sure that we modernize the operating system, enabling us to be able to better maintain and make even bigger improvements in the future. One particular area we've been focusing on is storage efficiency, data deduplication. On Synology solutions, we already have deduplication just at the application level. Hyper Backup already performs the duplication on your backups, whether they are local or to a remote destination. Active Backup for Business performs the duplications 
on your PCs, servers, and VM backups. And we've already seen it perform wonderfully on real-world data sets from our customers. Combining the experience we've gained from creating these two solutions, we'll now be bringing this technology into the core of DSM, enabling the duplication for the entire NAS. This will arrive in 2021 as a feature update to DSM-7, and we'll raise the bar again on what our solutions bring to the table. What we went over today has only been a portion of what is coming. DSM-7 is a huge step forward for the platform, and because of that, we're taking steps to make sure that it comes out as perfect as possible. A large update like this requires thorough testing and validation, and we're aiming to do just that. In September, over 6,000 participants have started testing DSM-7 through our preview program. And since then, we've made over 6,800 bug fixes and improvements. Many thanks to our testers. The next step forward, DSM 7.0 Beta will be available shortly. It is truly exciting, and we can't wait to get feedback on it. Finishing today's session, let's take a quick look at what we went over today. For DSM 7, we focus on usability, reliability, performance, and scalability. We're completely redefining what a smart data management system should be. Simple to use, easy to maintain, but feature-packed. We really look forward to empowering both existing and new system administrators with this update. And that's a wrap for this session. Now, we have three more topics that you should definitely check out. Brett is introducing our new take on what a hybrid cloud infrastructure looks like, featuring new integrations with our Synology C2 cloud service. And Jeremy will talk about our data backup solutions, including how we are pushing the boundaries there. Finally, Simon will walk you through our redesigned photo management solution, Photos. Thank you for watching, and we hope that you stay safe. See you next time.